Good evening, everyone. Welcome to yet another series on Thursday Thoughts. I know all of you have been very eager for this Thursday series that we've started, and KVC Academy is happy to host you in such large numbers. Well, all through this lockdown, um, I feel personally what I have been not able to manage is my time. Okay, honestly, the only thing I was ever on time was to play Ludo games, and uh, that doesn't show very well of me. So why we thought why not have a session on time management this week by someone who always likes sticking to the point, does no bakwas, and is always straight up. Good evening, everyone, once again, and join me in welcoming our host for the evening, CA Jason Castellano. Please, sir. Jason, sir, is a faculty at KVC Academy over six years now. He is a special orator at the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India and also a partner in KNDC Associates and LLC. He is specialized in the subjects of cost management and accounting, financial management at the intermediate level. He specialized in mathematics and statistics at the foundation level and also shows excellent skills in training students at the final level for the subjects of strategic financial management and advice. So I'm so glad to have you here today, sir. Welcome. Yeah. And we have participants in huge numbers. Guys, uh, the thing about uh, time is you never have enough of it. So... Uh, we need to learn how to utilize this time very well, especially as uh, CS students. Um, it's a horror when you check your schedule in the lockdown, but uh, it's even more a horror when you check how much you've been able to study in the last three months. So to get you a little more motivated than you already are, I hand over this session to CA Jason. Over to you, sir. Thank you so much, Deepika. That was a lot of introduction from you. And I'm so glad to see so many participants coming on time for this session because I was just hoping that students are not late even for this because if you're attending a session on time management and then you're late, it actually contradicts your whole point of attending this session. So I'm so glad to see so many of them. I welcome all of you for this session How on the clock is ticking. So basically I'm going to tell you how to manage your time. We all, all believe that uh, time is very, very limited. I'm sure everybody agrees with me. We cannot increase the time that is there with us, but we can manage it well. So before I just start this session, I'm going to give you the overview of the things that I'm going to be covering today. So just give me a minute before I connect to this slide. So this is the breakup that I have. First, we'll be starting with general value of time like where exactly uh, we spend our time and sometimes we think that time is not so important and so on. And next we have uh, examination preparation period. Now this is the period uh, from the time of your registration till the time of your examination. And then I'll be talking about exam period. Now this is once your first paper commences, so your examination of the first paper commences till the end of your examination. So basically, uh, for your November attempt, I'm talking about November 1 to November uh, 15, 16, or for your May attempt, I'm talking about May 1 to May 15, 16, the most critical part. And then even more critical is the last three hours, what I call as uh, the time that actually matters. doesn't matter what you do in the previous nine months, what you do the previous day, what you do the previous hour. All that matters is the last three hours in the examination hall. Then few don'ts that we usually do where we uh, fall behind on time management and little bit of advice from me and at the end it will be your time to ask your queries. Okay, so with that, with that overview, I'm going to start my session now. I believe most of them who have joined me are uh, pursuing chartered accountancy course. So the topics that I'm covering are more or less relevant to the course. Not, I'm not going to speak, speak beyond the course as such. So, if you see on screen over here, a couple of questions to be asked. Since I cannot get answers from you, I want you to answer to yourself. How many of you snooze your alarm? Just answer to yourself. How many of you think it is fine to be couple of minutes late 
it's fine one minute people are going to wait it's totally fine it's fine to go 5 minutes late to class it's fine but if you have a flight do you go late no we don't but if at all you think 1 minute is not a lot of time how does adding 1 minute to your sleep make any difference so if you are getting my point i am saying if you think that 1 minute is not going to make a lot of difference the same 1 minute when you think that you are going to sleep for extra time it makes a lot of difference to you right so 1 minute is a lot of time so when i put it in terms of sleep it is a lot but if you think otherwise no i'm going to catch up on that later on that's that's the mentality that we have so let's see the value of a minute now for this i will be going little bit into numericals difficult introduction to all that i teach maths not many of them like it but just to make you know the value of your time one minute of your time let's say we qualify all of you are going to qualify as chartered accountants so once you qualify even if i talk in terms of the pay scale in mangalore you would be drawing a minimum let's say minimum of 25000 i'm sure everybody agrees me agrees with me on this others you wouldn't be on be doing this course so even if i consider 25000 rupees which your employer is ready to pay you you will be working only for 25 days so basically he is ready to pay you 1000 for a day he knows you will be working only for 8 hours so little bit of calculation if you are having a pen and paper you can do your math otherwise i'll tell you it is 125 rupees per hour 60 minutes so you divide 125 by 60 you get little over to something little over to so that's the value of your 1 minute 2 rupees something doesn't look like a big amount but now what if i tell you every minute you need to give me 1 rupee i mean in fact 2 rupees then that accumulates to a quite a big value quite a big sum same way i already told you if you have to go to a Uh, airport you are always on time because we know if you miss something you are already paid for it and you are going to have to forgo that money people even overeat i'm sure most of you do we all love food we overeat when we know that we have already paid for it yet but when we have paid full fees for the classes we go late because we think ah we are not going to lose much actually you are losing a lot so this is the value of time i have gone on the lower scale i have just taken 25000 it's going to be much much bigger than this and you can do your calculations depending on how much you think you would be drawing as you qualify so next i would be coming from ca's point of view the first step that is your time you register for the course up till the time you write your examination so now here there are three different levels in the course of ca this foundation there is intermediate this finals i have already put it up on the screen the period that i'm talking about for foundation it is 6 months intermediate it is 9 months and for finals this little more time but you'll be working at that same time two and a half years of article ship and six months of study leave so i'll be taking the middle most uh, level for most of my examples you can make necessary changes in your calculation so if i'm talking about intermediate we start soon after you clear your foundation examination you go on till write your intermediate examination now whatever i'm going to say here maybe is a repetition for quite a few because uh, i've said this before in class as well sometimes and uh, if you have come personally and met me i have given, given this calculation so if i had to give a little bit of calculation over here all that you get for intermediate examination 
is nine full months nine months of classes i mean nine months of uh, time to study for the examination and you have eight subjects to cover now how much is the total time nine months if i convert it to days i have 270 days this is 270 days so i'll break this up as 180 days and 90 days first 180 days you can either do self study or definitely coaching whatever it is whichever way you choose to study here you get to know what is there in the subject the content you're not gonna learn in and out of all of it you just going to know the basic stuff that is there in this subject next 90 days you're going to actually learn the subject this is where you actually learn when you try to do it on your own because what happens in the first 6 months most of them go for uh, coaching classes so you do what the faculty has asked you to do but in the next nine, I mean 90 days, you get all sorts of doubts, you question yourself. This is where the learning begins. I would say first six months, maybe just 20 percentage or 30 percentage. But in the next period that you have 90 days, that's where you learn. Now you'll tell me 90 days is not enough. Why? Why do you think 90 days is not enough? Because somebody else has told you 90 days is not enough. Little more numbers if I say 10 hours per day, 10 hours per day. I'm not asking you a lot, 10 hours is not very difficult for a serious student. 10 hours per day. Now this 90 days will give you 900 hours. Even if you go for coaching, all these subjects are covered in 800 hours. And you know when you're studying for the second time, since you know what is there in this subject, 900 hours should be enough time. I'll tell you how is it enough also. I'll give you subject-wise breakup so that you feel ah, it is possible. So even if I go subject-wise, I'll be taking intermediate subjects. You can uh, make necessary changes. Foundation students, you can definitely take six months as the period. So if I have to give break up there, you can say four months of coaching, two months of uh, uh, studying on your own, self-study. And if I'm talking about finals, articleship period is only for you to know what is there in the subject last six months. So I'm now taking for intermediate only. Just give me a minute, my... Okay. So what I was saying is, uh, I'll give you a subject-wise breakup. So even if I take the subjects of intermediate, I'll be starting with accounts. Let's say we take 10 days. We have law, the subject where we find it little difficult because it is theoretical. So I'll keep little more days for this, 15 days. Then we have taxation, we'll keep another 15 days, cost, we'll keep another to value over you, group 2, I'll take accounts again, let's say we keep another 10 days over here, the only name is advanced accounting but we all know it is not that advanced, we have IT, we take 6, we have SM, another 4 days, we have FM, another six days here. Not really required, but okay. Oh, no. Higher side, six days. And economics for finance, we have another five days. I think I left out audit. Take a 
take 10 days over there. I don't know how much does it add up to. I'm not uh, mathematically added, but it will come somewhere close to 90 or maybe uh, exceed by one or two days. So if this is the breakup, when you see on paper, it looks like it's not enough. I think it comes out 10 days only, not enough. But if I convert it to hours, it is 100 hours. Then you know, okay, so I can maybe finish. So what you should do after that is break these 100 hours chapter wise. And if at all there are units under these chapters, you need to break it up further unit wise. So since I'm comfortable with costing, I'll tell you how it's, it's still possible to finish costing in 12 days. Costing has around 12 chapters. So that's 12 days. Simple math, one chapter per day. But when you see over there, something like cost sheet, which we do repeatedly in every chapter, something like job costing or contract costing, everybody agrees these are easy chapters. So you take four hours for these chapters, you save six hours on each day. So you can use these extra hours that you have saved for the other subjects which you find little difficult. Something like a process costing, maybe you can take uh, one day and additional two to three hours. Because remember, uh, you have already seen what is there in the content. So now you are only revising. So when you are revising for the second time, it shouldn't be that difficult. Wherever you find things difficult, make sure you make necessary notes for it. And also in these three months, what you should do is you should prepare notes for each and every subject. So if I'm talking about accounts, write the chapter name, draw up the format of a basic problem or the first problem. First problem is usually the basic one. The things that will come in that particular format. The next problem, definitely you're not writing everything down. You're only writing the additional adjustments. How do we treat those adjustments? and so on. So even if a chapter, let's say uh, amalgamation has 25 problems, it can be summarized in five pages. First page will have your basic formats and then only your adjustments. Or if I again come to costing, you just have to summarize in maybe two pages. Just format, you know, where which thing goes where something in reconciliation. Okay, this is what you are supposed to do. So that will be covered. Everything from that particular chapter will be covered in four to five pages. So even if I'm talking about a subject which has 15 chapters, 15 into five comes up to 75, 75 pages only. You now, where are you going to use this? You're going to use this in the next period that I'm talking about examination period. Now, what is this period? This is the time period from the first paper till your last paper. Again, this is little more critical than your previous period. Sometimes what we do is six months we study 14 hours a day, 15 hours a day. We have reached a burned out point. We are not efficient anymore. We cannot study. That's the reason I tell you only 10 hours a day is enough. Here in the examination period, you have exams on alternate days. So if your exam is on 1st of May, 2nd you don't have 3rd, 4th you don't have 5th. So you get a day's gap. So I can consider that as 12 hours, the day before the examination. And after the examination, examination is from 2 to 5. So there you'll get additional 6 hours. After 5 o'clock you come home, 6 o'clock. You sleep for some time after that you study for 3 hours. You get full 12 hours the next day and the following morning you get approximately you get 18 hours. Let's say 15 hours on the lower side. In these 15 hours, first I'll tell you what you shouldn't do. Don't study anything new. What you have not studied in the past six months, you think you're going to cover it on the previous day? Don't talk to your friend and ask, okay, if they have studied this or your friend may sometimes scare you saying that this is the most important thing. It's okay. You don't have to learn full 100% teach. You can still score from what you know, from whatever you have studied, whatever you have prepared in the last six months. So you can just go ahead with whatever you have studied, only revise. So here, those 75 pages, whatever you have summarized, just go through that. 
Also, when you're summarizing, you need to make note of the difficult problems. You can just write over there this particular chapter, this particular problem I'm not able to like get hold of. So I need to revise this again. So there, if you have 18 hours, you get one hour per chapter. Definitely, the last two to three hours, you'll have to memorize your formulae or in law, maybe a few sections or in income tax also again a few sections and all of that you might have to read case studies for final students so keep three to four hours for that other than that you can study 15 hours only summarizing don't do anything other than this next period that i'm talking about is the period which actually matters the most the most critical one that's why i put it as the time that matters those three hours you do everything in the first six months. You study previous day for 20 hours, no, 25 students study for 25, 16 hours on the holiday day and little bit after examination, before examination, till one o'clock, 1.45, you go and study. Don't do that. These three hours are important. Here, you need to enter the examination hall thinking that you have prepared well. Here, you need to manage your time really well. Don't go at the last minute before examination. Make sure you reach the examination hall at least by 1.15, half an hour before. 1.45, you enter the examination hall. Now, if I ask you, what is the first thing that you do in the 15 minutes? Most of you read the entire question paper. Question paper is easy. You are happy. You look around, keep smiling. Okay, I'm gonna crack this. I see I am coming for you. But then, if it is difficult, you start panicking. Okay, this is me. I'm not gonna pass. I'm gonna come back again in November. Or oh, November, I'm gonna come back in May. So, you have already given out your result that you are not gonna pass. What should you do? What I feel is, whatever you read in this 15 minutes is waste so i'm not asking you to sit idle as you know the pattern your first question is always compulsory i'm sure everybody knows the pattern so i'm not going to go in detail for the pattern because i don't want to drag the session longer come to your examination point of view i'm only going to tell you how to manage time in the examination so i believe everybody knows the exam pattern so first question is mandatory so if you read the question or you don't read the question, does it make any difference? You read, you get to know you know it, cool. You get to know you don't know it, cool. Because that is mandatory. I suggest don't read that question. Read second question. Let's say you take five minutes to read that question. See if you can crack it. Read third question. See if you can crack it. So now from the remaining questions, your choice of only one question. So one of the two questions you have to write. So there is no point reading further and wasting time even after that. If you think the second question is easy, you can crack it, stop over there, don't read third question. I'll tell you what will happen if you read third question. You read second question, you read third question, you forget what is in the second question. So once your writing time starts, you'll be again reading that same question again. Instead of that, once you decide that you're writing second question or okay let's say you write you read second you read third you decide that you're writing second go ahead with it solve mentally start solving mentally yes you're not allowed to write in the examination you're not allowed to write in the exam answer script but you can work it out mentally 20 percent of the problem is solved in your mind you know what you're supposed to do which adjustment will come over there analyze properly so for the first question, there is no reading time in your actual three hours. Also, your three hours is 180 minutes. You have 100 marks. So each mark you get only 1.8 minute. And if I were to convert that, it comes to uh, eight point eight of a minute is uh, 48, 48 plus 60, 108 seconds per mark. So instead of that, I'll say for a five mark question, because usually we have five mark, 10 mark and uh, 20 marks. Five mark question, we get only eight minutes. So in fact, nine, I'm sorry, you get nine minutes. 
for a 10 mark question you get 18 minutes and for a 20 mark you get 36 minutes now this is the maximum time definitely you need some provision lower provisions one minute two minute and three minutes this is the provision that i'm talking about so net you get eight here you get 16 here you get maybe three or four minutes you have to keep i'll stick it as three only but this is on the lower side it is recommended to maintain one minute at least for five marks three minutes for 10 marks and five minutes at least for the uh, last 20 marks if there are any if there are lengthy questions so you get just this much time again when we study what we do is uh, in some of the subjects what we call as practical subjects i believe all these subjects are practical but what we call where we solve, solve them as problems we do not study theory but if you actually see it is easier to write a five mark theory than solve a five mark problem five mark problem will easily take 12 minutes five mark theory takes five minutes so you save time over there. Usually the last question, question number six, or in the previous uh, pattern, if there are any students from that particular pattern, there are seven questions. So the last question is always theory. There are four parts, five marks each. So it's total 20 marks. So if you attempt theory, you can finish it in 20 minutes. If you go for an amalgamation problem for 20 marks, it will take easily 45 minutes, easily 45 minutes. So you save time over there. Sometimes what happens is you get stuck in a problem. Five minute problem, you've already gone for 12 minutes. Don't continue with that problem. Leave it over there. Go to the next question. Also, this is the pattern that I've seen when a question is easy, it is lengthy. The question is difficult, it is short. So you think, okay, this is an easy question. This I've studied, seen. I've done this problem, same to same question. I know the answer by art and you go on for one hour, your time is killed. Most of the students who don't clear are the ones who did not complete the paper or they did not study. About not studying, I cannot uh, do anything, but if you have not completed the paper, do you really think you deserve to not pass? You deserve to pass, then you need to just manage your time. So what I'm asking you is if you at all you have finished half of a question, three fourths of a question, leave it over there, go to the next question because two half or three fourth answers are better than one full. Correct, you agree because even if you do a full problem, you may not get full marks, you may lose somewhere or the other. You would rather get maximum marks and the easy marks because sometimes adjustment takes a lot of time and uh, that adjustment may be probably having just one tenth of the total marks that are allotted. So this is how you need to uh, break down your three hours. Make sure in the first one hour you have completed 35 marks. Or First one or sometimes it is little difficult to keep it 30 because you don't get that speed. But I would still say 35 because the first 15 minutes you occupied for this. You didn't have to solve much. There. Next 35 when the bell of two hours, there's no bell, but if you can see have a watch, if you're carrying a watch, you will know when you complete two hours, you should finish 65 to 70, 70, 65 at least 70 would be great. And in the last one hour where your speed is maximum, you go with full speed where you and you can't understand what you've written. So there you keep another 35 minutes. Again, you need to keep provisions. We are all commerce students. We know what provisions are. So provisions for contingency. Sometimes you write everything properly, but at the end you realize that you might have to strike out the whole solution and then you try redoing it. You start panicking. You think, oh, I can't do it this time. You look around. So all this can be avoided. What I feel is if you manage your time well in these three hours, what you, uh, even if you had some flaws in your previous six months or the previous day, you can still cover it up. Over it. So these three months I call as very critical. So if I go in terms of percentage, first six months, you get only 20 percentage. Next three months, you get another, let's say, 50, 40 percentage. In terms of criticality, maybe you will uh, learn more over here. And the last uh, exam time, last 
exam days i'll call it as exam days this covers both your previous day and that particular day this covers your remaining 40 percentage or maybe even more if i have to give weightage to your last three uh three hours so that's how you're supposed to manage your time i'll take up your questions once i finish this session okay few of the things which we do i'm not going to give you the do's i'm only going to give you don'ts which you shouldn't first one is you worry about your lost time i did not study today something was there on tv or you went out or you couldn't study you were not feeling well you worry about that time what can be done you worry about that time and you lose another couple of days you think oh i cannot do it any longer i'm not good enough you feel low about yourself then you doubt your initial plan initially you are drawn up a plan i'm telling you to drop the initial plan take two days it is worth it i told you subject wise i give you break up only for three months that is after your coaching till the examination you can do the same for the first six months also you can divide over there also so you don't trust that plan yes definitely a plan should be flexible you need to make changes but after a point you think okay is my plan wrong am i doing it rightly because you know you have kept 10 days for account some have this habit of uh, studying continuous you finished in uh, 10 days accounts then you get 15 days for law you finish law in 15 days you are as per your plan your one month is over 10 plus 15 25 days are over you think only two more months are left now i have six more subjects to study you've gone wrong over it like if you're sticking to your plan you know the subjects which are to, to follow will not take much time next paper tax you take another 15 days you think oh one and a half month is over what am i gonna do no there is still enough time so don't doubt the initial plan that you have prepared don't put in extra hours i don't know many of them would actually agree on this if you decided to study 10 hours, don't put in 15 hours. Don't try to overdo. 10 may be a slight variation of 11 is fine. Maybe if you have not studied the previous day properly, you are trying to cover up a little bit. But if you study for 15 hours, you get burned out. These are not efficient hours. You need to sleep well. You need to eat well. You need to manage your day well as well. So just 10 hours. And in the previous day of the examination, I said 15, 15. Don't fear completion. Now this is specific. I already gave you the example after 45, uh, I mean, after two subjects of 25 days, you feel maybe I will not complete. Or even on the previous day of examination, you think there are 12 chapters. In the first four hours, maybe you've taken the difficult chapters, you've already taken 10, 10 hours. Then you think maybe I cannot complete. But when you have your budgets and you know if you're varying from the budgets, if you think that, okay, I'm going in the right direction, all the chapters after this are small, yes, you can finish. Same thing with the paper three hours you think in the middle maybe i won't complete the paper yes you need to speed up you need to cover up that time you cannot do you won't get additional time so you should not fear completion last don't give up don't give up till the last minute you never know when that last minute can give you uh, two additional marks i still remember my final examination i've given this exam so many uh, examples so many times in class the last answer that I wrote, I checked the answer. It was even maybe I, uh, after the bell rang when the uh, faculty was collecting, usually it was collecting the papers. I got that answer right and I can tell you I got two marks for that answer and my total was 201. This was in CA final. Maybe I did not get two marks over there or I got, but I'm saying that important every minute. I told you in the beginning how important it is in terms of money. But if one minute can give me one mark, and as you told you, 1.8 minute is one mark. And if I'm getting 1.8 minute in each subject, I'm getting eight marks. Now, how many of them uh, are stuck between 190 to 200? If the pass percentage is 20 percentage, I can say another 20 percentage are there between 190 to 200. So if you had managed well, if you had saved that one minute in all the subject, maybe, maybe you would have, you know, the other side of the, uh, other side of the um, passing marks. So don't give up. So 
this is all that i have about uh, the exam preparation and exam writing small advice more more than advice it is an equation equation that i would like to give i told you i like mathematics so this is the equation that i have for you your potential marks what is your potential marks your hard work whatever you have done in the last 6 months plus 3 months 9 months if you are see a final student during your article ship and the 6 months of study leave or 3 months of study leave whatever you have got you need to adjust accordingly the hard work that you put in you put in so many hours into i'm talking about in relative terms so i'm saying into coverage coverage of the subject so you say you put in hard work you don't cover anything then it's not going to make any difference so you need to cover the topics all the topics you will ask me i get messages is this important is that important everything is important that's why it is there in the syllabus otherwise the board of studies would have removed it coverage is important into effectiveness you studied pinch of 10 let's say 12 hours you cover everything but you're not effective you using your phone you're doing a lot of other things you're not managing well much drops confidence now you've done everything right before the examination day you have no confidence you say ah, i am going to fail why simply to study it's okay next month next 6 uh, months again i'm going to study pakka i'm anyways going to fail what is the use you call up others and make them also nervous hey it's okay man i'll fail ha ah, so that's your confidence so here if i have to give you a numerical i'm talking about potential marks is equal to you put in full 100 percentage of your hard work but you do not cover everything so i'll take 90 percent effectiveness you are only 90 percentage effective confidence you are only 90 percentage so how much is that 90 percentage of 100 is 90 another 90 percentage of that is uh, 81 81 90 percentage probably is 72 point something let's say your potential marks is 72 this is what you can get definitely you can increase that by covering more being little more effective and having a little more confidence and i say confidence don't be over confident you should be rightly confident of what you have studied i told you that's your potential marks what are your actual marks you can see it on the screen your potential marks that is your 72 into your time management skills you studied everything you have the confidence on the examination day you complete the paper to the extent of 60 percentage 60 percentage of 72 is how much less than 50 it comes somewhere around 43 i believe you don't have confidence as you lose marks but the main point here is what you do in those 3 hours i keep repeating this what you did in 6 months not relevant what you did in 3 months not relevant previous day examination also not relevant ultimately the marks that you score is because of your skill to complete the paper yes to complete the paper you should know what is there so all the previous months are also important i will say that now don't think that only last 3 hours are important i'll do i'll manage something in 3 hours yes you need to do all of that but if you are let's say you finish 50 percentage you get only 36 so many of them finish only 50 percentage you finish 90 percentage you are through You'll get somewhere around 60, 63, 64. Let's say 64. It is way above your exemption marks. You still have a provision of another 14 marks per paper. So this is my. These are my couple of equations for you. Your potential marks and actual marks. Follow this. I'm damn sure you'll be able to manage your time well. You will be able to complete your paper. complete your revision on the previous day complete your second round post your classes and during the class also see i told you 10 hours 6 hours 7 hours in the class 3 hours put in even if it is self study okay you put in 10 hours maybe you need one hour extra because you are doing it on your own so you do it this way i'm i'm sure you'll be able to manage your time in the course of ca that's all that i had to say i have uh, not dragged the session a lot because i wanted to uh, hear it from you i wanted to take the questions from you so that 
I can uh, actually uh, answer them. So there can be a two-way communication. So I have uh, cut short at this. If there's anything not clear from what I've explained, you can definitely uh, post your question. I will take up your question and I'll try to answer to the best of my ability. So there are a few questions already. Okay, I got a question. Uh, is 10 hours per day actually necessary for covering just group one? Depends. Depends on how much you want to cover. Group one, if you're planning to write only group one, you would be uh, still having 90 days. So this 90 days, you can still divide it into, divided by uh, four subjects. You get little more time. You still get 900, 900 hours. Uh, maybe you can reduce it to nine hours per day or even eight hours per day would be sufficient. Again, this depends on your grasping capacity, but then yes, I believe eight hours is also enough. When I was studying for my final examination, I used to study for seven hours a day, only on weekdays, six months I had a study leave. So uh, all the weeks, weekdays I study for seven hours a day. Weekend Saturday was for my friends, so I used to go out. You need to balance your life. Sunday was for my family. Sunday is always for my family. So I studied for only five days, seven hours a day. I was able to clear, and I don't think it should be difficult for others too. I've given on the higher side there 10 hours should be enough. Group one, even eight hours should be enough. Again, as I told you, don't overdo. Do what you do properly. If I start studying today for foundation how many hours should i study the question from a student asking if i should study how many hours should i study uh, you're not specified which attempt are you taking let's say you are, you are taking this july august august right yeah, august attempt i believe the exams are starting in the second week second week of august so you still have uh, 10 let, let's leave out august you have full july that's 30 Days, 31 days, you have another, uh, yeah, somebody's reply, it's August, so yeah. So your whole of, of July, you have June as well, June only four days are over. Let's leave out six days over here, so you still have 50 days. 50 days is a lot of time for foundation. Okay, I'm not trying to brag about myself over here, but I studied for only nine days, nine days, it was CPT then. I studied for only nine days. I'm not studying. I'm not saying that you should study only for nine days, but 50 days is a lot of time. You divide it by four subjects. It is still 12 and a half days. Let's say leave out half 12. If you see this uh, coverage of the subject, it is basically your second PUC. So even if you consider one chapter per day, 12 days per subject shouldn't be difficult. This is on the lower side because I've told you uh, I've left the last six days and uh, left out the first six days as well. Shouldn't be difficult. I know other students also who have done it in 15 days of study, 20 days of study. Even on the uh, lower side, 50 days is a lot of time. You will be able to do it. Don't think about not completing it. Yes, I know once you start after a few days, you think maybe not complete, you'll skip an attempt, not required. But if you're talking about the November attempt, which may not happen in November, maybe December, you have a lot of time but having said that don't waste your time now because you waste now you uh, gonna find it a little difficult later on so put in hard work now study as much as you can right now maybe you can reduce the number of hours per day you can spend a little more time with your friends family balance your uh, life your personal professional educational all of that manage your time well definitely be able to do it which is the best time to study actually early morning or night okay uh, that depends on the person i was always a night person i, I cannot get up early in the morning uh, i do not know i come and take up class at seven o'clock even now students who attend that class know that most of the time i'm still in my sleep like at least my eyes look like i'm in, I'm in, I'm in sleep so but getting up early in the morning was a little difficult for me so what i used to do is my day started only at 11 o'clock like the test match that you have in England started 11, late breakfast, go on till maybe 1.32, then I have lunch, late lunch again, then 
study then i used to four o'clock i used to go to play that's why i told you i studied only four hours four to seven seven thirty i used to play and then come back sleep and then study again at night so depends some people like to study in the morning get up early in the morning then maybe you can study for uh, sleep for some time in the afternoon but the problem with sleeping in the afternoon is your examination is in the afternoon and so you start yawning in the examination you do not want to prepare all your uh, and, uh, nine months and then go and sleep in the examination so i would suggest you not to sleep in the afternoon i mean said that which is the best time i won't be able to answer it because every person it is different then there's a question how to manage article ship with studies okay here what you should do is first decide whether you are taking coaching or not if you are taking coaching whether it is live or online i'm not going to promote anything you can do what you think you can even self study is possible but what you should do is you should know what is there in a subject in the article ship period you will not remember anything by the time you finish article ship just know what is there in the subject so if i see direct tax indirect tax you'll be doing in your article ship period accounts just go through and see what is there i'm saying direct tax indirect tax you don't even have to start before you you finish two and a half years not finish article ship two and a half years uh, accounts just go through advanced management accounting is something what you have in intermediate so just go through the problems understand what i have said was just understand what is there what i told for six months for intermediate knowing what is there in the subject just 20 percentage that you're supposed to do it in two and a half years if you're taking classes make sure you finish your classes before you take that last six months don't take classes at the end you're going to start panicking because classes will go on you think you're not going to finish and all of that so do it that way try it out i'm very sure it is going to be enough now if you are telling me that one year of article ship is over two years of article ship is over just half a year left no problem even if you don't study anything if you have just finished your classes just know what is there even now it is not too late six months is a lot of time you can take online classes you can take live classes yes you do have to uh, put in extras morning and evening you can finish before the two and a half years last six months you can write still if you think you cannot write write only one group for one group six months even if you are not done anything even if you're starting from scratch more than enough six months one group even if you're starting from scratch even at final level so uh, work accordingly on your schedule prepare a timetable today itself write it down today tomorrow take three days for it and make sure you have a variance report okay teach a, teach costing as well so you should have your budgets you need to have your actuals and your variance you know where you're going wrong you need to cover it up in the next chapter or so couple of more questions cup sir how to get away from phone more like distraction because i noticed that just after 15 minutes i switch back to phone no matter how hard i try to stay away from it now this is self control distractions i understand i am not someone who will ask you to uh, uninstall whatsapp instagram and all of that somebody somebody else may you and tell you to do that i will not ask you to do that because if I uninstall, I'll be more curious. So let it be. Don't keep your phone next to you when you're studying. Keep targets for yourself. Okay, this is what I used to do. You can take this as a suggestion. Keep targets for yourself. I'm going to finish this much in one hour as per my budget. Only then I'm going to touch my phone. And what are you going to do with your phone? You're not going to keep it next to you at all. You're going to keep it somewhere far. Or if somebody else is there in your house who can uh, take care of this give it to them definitely with your locked uh, screen you can give it to them and uh, after one hour you just ask them for your phone back you take it back then use it reply for all the messages or your instagram views whatever you have to check get back to it after 15 minutes again continue the study so give targets for yourself it worked wonders for me I even had to watch TV series. I was so addicted to a TV series. So what I should do is I should tell, okay, if I complete this one problem, I get to watch one episode. So episode is of 20 minutes. So I was like, okay, I finish one problem. I get to watch that. And I cannot watch next. Why? Because I have to finish one more problem. 
in 10th standard when somebody told you that you will get a bicycle after clearing your 10th standard how hard did you study or whatever you are getting nowadays you get phones when you pass your 10th standard so when there is motivation you can study think of the uh, life after you qualify value of your time after you qualify it's not just 2 rupees that was on a lower scale it's much much beyond that think of the money that you're going to lose in 6 months if you lose an attempt this is going to motivate i don't know if you answered your question uh, to your requirement please share it in the next message how many hours per day uh, to study foundation to normal person so i believe we all are normal i would still say 10 hours if you are attending coaching right now you are anyways covering 6 hours over there and of 4 hours shouldn't be difficult if you are writing in november you can even reduce it to 2 hours to 3 hours what do you think is the average time one should study per day i already covered this i said a 10 hours 10 hours should be uh, put in i believe ca study students study much more than that so 10 hours shouldn't be difficult if so you actually see you get much more than that even if you get up at if you are a morning person you get up at 6 o'clock you start by 7 7 to 9 you get 2 hours breakfast and you start again at 10 10 to 1 you get another 3 hours so you are covered 5 hours let's say afternoon you eat food and sleep you resume at 4 o'clock 4 to 7 or 4 to 6 another 2 hours and you freshen up for for yourself time for yourself after 10 you study for some more time you put in 10 hours easily over there shouldn't be difficult what could be the changes in the timetable or learning methodology because of the extended study period due to the postponement of the exams by 3 months now this can be a uh, very very frustrating i understand spoken to so many of my students who had worked out in the first 4 to 5 months and then you get to know you get an additional 3 months now this can actually affect your efficiency i would suggest reduce the number of hours i would not ask you to study the same thing 4 to 5 times somebody else may give you other suggestions but what i feel is do not overdo it because when we start to study 50% of them say i'm trying to get a rank after 2 months i'm writing both groups to pass another one month i'm writing one group to pass or exemption then to pass and then you'll be like well go only for one exemption shouldn't be that way your efficiency comes down don't overdo reduce the number of hours you're studying if you're studying 10 right now you got to know you have less portion to cover you can repeat everything one more time but you don't need full time again so don't study for 10 hours is what i suggest put in 9 hours you you one hour to yourself again get back to 10 hours once it comes closer to your examination because your efficiency has to be at its peak during examination i used to study for 7 hours i told you so when i started at 7 then i went to 8 when i came closer and closer to the examination 8 9 10 examination previous day i used to hit 15 hours because that's what matters 15 hours at intermediate level i think i wish to even eat 16 hours with 5 hours 6 hours of sleep sleep well 7 hours of sleep only one hour for yourself you can hit that time provided you don't burn yourself out in that period 9 months is a lot of time you'll get burned out i've seen some students during coaching also they go home study for 5 6 hours 2 months they do it next 4 months they don't do it instead of that you do the same thing over a period of time it will be better i'm writing my inter examination in november what strategy i should adopt to study so that i don't have to face disadvantage of this situation okay so if you are writing your examination you are eligible to write in november uh, as of now i do not know whether they are going to be holding the examination as per the schedule doesn't look very likely because your examination is in the month of november uh, i mean uh, month examination is in the month of august now by the time the results are out it will be 
at least um, August, September, October, whatever they do, they will not get, give it to you before October. And I'm not very sure if they're going to hold it in November, so it is going to be December. So it's very uncertain as of now, but what you should do is you should not be prepared for what may or may not happen for uncertainty is prepared for the worst. Let's say you have examination in November. I again do not know if you are a inter student foundation pass or you are doing your articleship. Uh, never mind. So if you are in articleship, you had a good time during lockdown. I do not know if you have studied. Even if you are a foundation pass student, you had a good time in the lockdown. I do not know if you have studied. Even now, it is not late. You have a lot of time. A lot of time to even read both the groups. How to face the disadvantage or so that I don't have face the disadvantage of the situation. Uh, I do not know what disadvantage you're talking about. You will definitely get more and more time to study. It's very unlikely to have examination on November 1st. So that's the advantage is situation. If you can post the, uh, if you can elaborate your question in the following message, I would again uh, take it up. How many hours a student should study at the beginning that too after this lockdown may many students got lazy. See what is over is over. You cannot change it. Lockdown you enjoyed. I don't know how many Ludo games you all used to play per day. You cannot do anything about it. What you can do now is plan from here. So don't think of what you did. Now that you got lazy, I would ask you to start with four hours per day. Do it for three days. You will definitely hit seven in the next one week. Then eventually in another five to six days after that. So probably 12 days from now, you will reach 10 hours. What is the motivation? Motivation is the value of money that you're going to save if you qualify early. Um, I don't know how many of you are part of my orientation session, but there I do tell you the value of my value of my one month. And if you remember the calculation, the value of one month actually comes up to 5 lakhs. I had told this in the orientation. Many more are yet to join the, uh, join the orientation. I would be again giving you that calculation. It's way too complex for now. So I'm not given that calculation. So yeah, if you ask me value of one month is 5 lakhs into 6, that is 30 lakhs. Are you ready to lose 30 lakhs? If somebody tells you I'm giving you 30 lakhs, don't be lazy. Uh, will you be lazy? No, right? So that is the motivation money motivates so think that you're going to lose 30 lakhs don't think that you're not going to earn think it as you lost it you add money and you lost it so that's going to motivate you hopefully you'll not be lazy okay so i can see who has sent that question not surprised that you have got lazy suggest how to stop procrastinating okay See, uh, usually we procrastinate when we think that it is not very interesting, correct? So for this also, my answer would be same thing, motivation, 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 self-motivation. You need to motivate yourself, only then you are going to be able to uh, prepare for the examination. Otherwise, you are just going to think that, okay, I'm not going to clear this time. I will push it to the next day, push it to the next day, and it goes on and on. So you need to motivate yourself. Whatever you have done so far, not important. From now, there's enough time. You can do it. You see, I told you confidence is one of the factors to your potential marks or your actual marks. So if you think that you can do it, not just the confidence of the subject, if you think you can do it, this is enough time. You, there is enough time. It's a lot of time. How many hours of sleep should we get or do we give up on our sleeping? No, no, not at all. Don't cut short on your sleep. It is not worth it. Sleep well, sleep for seven hours a day. If you're finding it difficult, sleep for seven and a half hours. But what will happen, happen if you sleep more? You feel more sleepy. Not required. Seven hours, more than enough. And because of lockdown, I'm sure you must be sleeping for 10 hours, 12 hours also. Some of you wake up directly for lunch at one o'clock. Uh, it'll take some time. Five to six days, you'll be back to your regular routine. You should be able to do it. 
I feel I lack in practical subjects. I take long time to understand it and solve it. Your suggestion. Okay, so this is not part of uh, time management, but if you're saying uh, you're taking more time in practical subjects, okay, I understand that. Okay, so you can save your time in the theory subjects. Law, I told 15 days, finish it in seven days. Accounts, I said 10, take 13, costume, take more time. But as I see, all subjects are practical. I call law also a practical subject. Audit is also a practical subject for me. IT is also a practical subject. So the moment you think that, okay, I can do this, or you think accounts is a theory subject. As simple as that. You understand the theory well. See, all the subjects are theory as well as practical. Accounts also has theory. Read the basic foundation for the particular chapter first. You don't try to directly solve the problems. You're not able to solve the problems because you don't read theory in that particular chapter. So if you are a person who likes theory, read theory first. You said you can understand theory. So once you understand theory, it's the same thing that you put on paper. That's practical. Do not have all the books at at home term because of lockdown and it is really hard to study on laptop on this site. Any suggestions, sir? See now, these are the reasons that we give for not studying. You don't have your books. Okay, I understand you cannot study from the screen. I understand. But what about printing it out? I do not know in which uh, locality that you are staying. But you can find a cyber. You can print it out. You don't have to see the screen. Now you're going to think about the cost. Is it more than the value that you're going to lose if you do not clear? Ask yourself, do a cost benefit analysis. What is the benefit that I'm going to get if I even print it out? Or what is the cost that I'm going to incur on photocopies? You know that it is available. In the, you definitely know it is available in the chat because you're saying that it is there on your desktop or your laptop, but you cannot do not prefer to study from it. So print it out. As simple as that. If you like hard copy, go for it. How do you actually assess whether you're on right track? I get doubts about whether I'm doing enough. How do I reassure myself? That's the reason I told you you should spend three days for your full plan. You need to plan it really well. So when you're given the breakup, I told six months, you divide it to subjects, let's say 12 days per subject, or even when you take law. So most of them find law difficult. So I'm talking about law. 15 days here, said. So you can further break it up. Law, you cannot always go by chapter wise so law is usually reading the theory sections so if let's see how many pages are there in your law book count it take your time 800 pages divided by 15 days see how many pages you have to read and when you read this these pages are to be summarized in such a way that you can refer it on the previous day of the examination the previous day of the examination you are not reading everything that is there in the law textbook 600 800 pages you are going to read only those 100 to 150 pages which you have written in your hand, in your handbook so 150 pages 15 hours shouldn't be difficult to read on the previous day that's what i would suggest you can reassure yourself by uh, seeing the budgets that you have prepared you have kept 10 days see how many days you have taken so you get that reassurance don't try to change much if if it is going that badly, if you are planned for two books, then uh, two groups, then maybe you can switch to one. But I wouldn't suggest because you have decided to do something, go for it. I'm not going to give up that easy. How to manage time when I'm studying BCom along with a CA? Now this gets a little difficult. That's the reason. want to uh, do both do one at a time to become well to see really well do one at a time but if you're doing if you're anyways in the day college i'm talking about day college union college you anyways can manage day college uh, i do not know which college you're coming from so uh, you will have to put in extra hours you have to put in two hours every day it gets a little difficult day college i do understand but yes you have to put in extra two hours Also, I would suggest you to give more preference to CA because ultimately this is what is going to increase your value. A become degree does not increase much. Okay.
okay this person had e earlier asked me a question and now says foundation pass okay one who is having inter examination in november so okay disadvantages to be very honest i don't think that you are in a disadvantage situation you are in advantage situation provided you used uh, the lockdown period to its optimum use even if you said six or seven hours it is a bonus your number exams i don't think will be till before december as i already told you december 1st maybe that also looks very unlikely to me so there's nothing much you can do about it whatever time is there do not waste even from now even if you are not started studying even from now if you study till the end you will be able to clear both the groups take it from me we feel that if we study now in the examination gets postponed again then we might forget what we have studied so we lack motivation to study now we don't forget we don't forget it will be there inside somewhere it will be stored inside your head it is like see your head brains are like your hard disk so you will still be knowing what is there you just need to revise uh, pre revise on the previous day so if you think that um, anyways my exam is going to be postponed and i don't study now later i will study then what is the point so basically you are studying only for the examination point of view you are not studying to learn it so you are mostly memorizing if you learn you will not forget if you memorize you may forget i hope you answered your question there i'll take few more questions should we really expect an examination in august considering the current situation because of the covid uh, i'm not in a position to answer this okay so you will get necessary notifications from the government of india best time to study finals i saw your other messages uh, so your yeah, best time to study finals is uh, now when you are doing your article ship since i can see the name i know you are doing your article ship right now study right now this is the best time understand what is there in the subject you will be able to cover everything how to learn tax there are many sections ha huh. so again not to do much with the time but learn the sections understand why the section was implemented the memorandum for the section most of the faculty tell you why the section was implemented so study it that way i'm running through the questions quickly now one more what if uh, you are very 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 uh, bad at the subject maths and stats for me how do you tackle the worst uh, thing that you like it once you think that you can like it it is there in your mind you will be able to crack it so if you think that maths and stats is difficult you really think that ca is easy saying maths is difficult which is there at foundation level saying stats is difficult which is there at foundation level you don't like numbers you are saying but if you think that way you think ca is easy so if i had asked you a question at the beginning of the course ca is easier maths is easy you would have definitely told maths is easier it remains same even now it's there in your head because maybe you did not like it in your uh, primary high school classes so that's why you think it is not for me you can do it just work little harder theory subject will take long time to understand the concept please suggest how can i manage the time with this issue uh, you have to reduce your time in the practical subjects let's say only way i see otherwise maybe you'll have to put in extra hours you know how many hours you would require so accordingly you need to plan how much max time i should give to a practical subject per day how many max days i should take for practical subject to finish i'm a foundation student so uh, it does not depend on whether you are studying a practical subject or a theory subject i told you break it down you can convert all these chapters to hours like if i complete this chapter i am going to studying those many hours so you convert them to hours you study them don't have a predetermining that i am going to study only practical subjects these many hours on theory subject these many hours there are students who study at one stretch one particular subject you can do that some people study two subjects you can do that what i suggest is study two subjects at a time not more than that so that you even get the flow maybe you can take 3 i wouldn't suggest to go for more than 3 
okay that's all that i have and all the questions i hope i have answered most of them so i will uh, uh hand over to deepika before that i thank case academy for giving this opportunity uh, to speak to students on how to manage time i hope it was of some use uh, trust me i have been speaking only what i have done when i prepared for my intermediate and finals forget about the cpt part i did not study so intermediate finals this is what i did three days of proper planning keep a plan ready make necessary adjustments in the middle make be flexible for your changes stick to your plan you don't necessarily have to do what i have done or what your friends are doing everybody has a plan but try to use the time to the best of its use uh, that's all um, over to deepika thank you so much thank you so much for patiently listening to me thank you so much deepika for introducing me and concluding the session thank you all i need to unmute deepika i can't find you deepika there you go you are thank you unmuted. so much jason for unmuting me firstly and secondly for answering all the questions of the students so patiently and so wonderfully i'm sure they have benefited out of this and at least after this they will put their lockdown time to some more uh, effective use apart from playing ludo and sharing memes with each other guys uh, this was a session on time management hosted by our very own ca jason we have more sessions coming up for you every thursday but uh, we would like to hear from you or take suggestions from you on any particular topic that you would like us to cover so you have our access to our instagram id you have access to our mail id our contact numbers and even our facebook page please feel free to leave in suggestions there also another thing whatever sessions are conducted every thursday we are posting them on our youtube channel yes kvc academy is now on youtube so i request you to subscribe to the channel and also share it amongst your friends who are not able to be a part of this session if you have any more queries you can leave a personal message to jason sir on time management as well as personal questions i'm sure he will answer all of them willingly with that same smile that he has right now also uh, before i sign off jason sir would you like to say something yeah what i was saying is if you still have questions uh, we already have a group on whatsapp which was created today so post your question over there i will try to answer to the best of my ability Yes, you can post all your queries there, and he will be happy to help. Please give us more suggestions on what topics you would like us to cover. We're free. We have a lot of Thursdays, and let's make some good use of this lockdown. Now, this is KVC Academy signing off. But before that, I just want to ask you one question: If you ever think, uh, what time is it right now? What is the time right now? It is the time for you to get off your mobile phones and go into your books. Only then will you be able to manage your time well. To so see you next Thursday. Stay tuned and watch the KVC Academy page. It was nice hosting you all. Have a great evening. Thank you, Jason, once again. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, sir.